Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I'm bringing to you another live paper crafting class. It is Wednesday, September 9th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting live. Welcome to all of you, I'm peeking at my computer here, welcome to all of you who are already live with me. This is so much fun. I love doing YouTube lives because you can see the comments rolling in before you even begin. Um, I wish that I was ready quicker because then I could be commenting back and forth with everybody, but I'm just catching ones here and there and it's so fun to read um, everyone's conversations and, and comments. Um, also, it's really neat to see when you are uh, connecting the picture that is in the, the preview for the, the live video to the project that we're going to do. It's, it's kind of a way of giving a sneak peek. You see the beginning of it, but there's more on the inside and I can't wait to show you what the inside of this looks like. So um, I received a really, really fun card. I'm, I'm calling it a card, but it's, it's, it's actually like a holder, um, more like a 3D thing in a way. But anyways, um, I received it from my friend Verla Carpenter. She is a demonstrator in my group. Um, but just a creative lady. I just I love everything she creates and she sent me this project um, that I got so excited about that I had to make my own version to share with all of you. She got the idea from, let's see, Fanny Scrap Stampin'. Fanny Scrap Stampin'. I couldn't find her actual like birth name though. <laughs> So, um, so thank you, Fanny Scrap. Um, I'm very excited that you posted this idea um, in metrics, uh, the metric system, and then Verla was able to convert it to a size or a size, uh, the imperial measurements. So using inches, and then I took her idea and rolled with it. So you started something. <laughs> Thanks, Fanny Scrap. Thanks, Verla. Um, can't wait to share this with you. So that's what I'm going to show you. It's a, it's a face mask holder. So it's something that you could put in your briefcase, in your purse, in your car, in your backpack, um, and take with you. Uh, I think Fanny Scrap even mentioned that if you laminate it, it's even more protective. So it's it's different than just stuffing it in like a pocket of one of your carrier, carrier kind of bags, right? Uh, and it's, it's a nice way to give it to someone too. So I'm making one, uh, one of these holders that were, you know, is giftable, um, but yes, once it's given, it could also be used as the storage device for a face mask. I hope you like this idea. I'm so excited about it. Um, so if you are watching live with me, sit back and watch, um, relax, enjoy. If you log into your YouTube account, you can comment along with everyone. Um, hey, Miley. <laughs> um, so anyways, yes, comment and participate. If you comment, you get entered into a prize drawing. And we do a prize drawing from all the live comments uh, at the end. Trisha Josephs, welcome her back, please. Um, she's been gone for a while. We've missed her. Um, but Kayla did a great job while she was gone. So thank you to both of my moderators. So Trisha Josephs is back today, and she is going to be helping out with questions, um, you know, comments, and adding information in there that you might need. So please reach out to her. Again, she is the person who has the little wrench symbol next to her name, like a little tool. And so um, to comment with people, if you want to interact with somebody, you just put the at sign before their name and then you select their name so you can tag them in your comment. As you can see, I'm wearing kind of a jackety type of <laughs> clothing today. It's getting cold here. Um, especially where I live. I don't know if it's throughout the U.S. or not. I'm not one to, to watch TV or the news, but I, I hear it's getting cold. It's beginning to get um, to be fall, like actually kind of wintry. We had the heat on yesterday. Well, I did. Everyone else was fine with it, but I needed the heat. So I'm kind of wearing my combination of um, fall jacket stuff, but I'm rebelling because I have a tank top too, and I am not ready for summer to be over. It's my favorite season. So um, hence the outfit today. It, plus, it, it's neutral, so it kind of goes with the project. <laughs> Normally I try to color code, but we're doing something with plaid, um, and I didn't have any orange and yellow plaids. Okay, what else do I want to tell you before we get, begin? Sorry, I got kind of on a side note there. Um, if you share the video, comment that you shared, 
because that helps us to get you in the prize drawing too. If you're watching this video after the live is over, you can comment as well. There's gonna be another section after the live is done and you can comment there and you'll get entered into the prize drawing that we do the week following. So I have some winners to share from last week. We'll draw the winners at the end and um, I'll show you the prizes at the end too. So let's dive in. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm looking at my, I have a little cheat sheet in front of me here. Um, oh, products. Just want to mention that if you are in need of the products list, if you want to know what I'm using, you can look in the description of the video and it tells you right there. Uh, so no need to, you know, worry too much about that. Plus I'm going to share on my screen in just a second here, the products and the measurements. You can take a screenshot if you know how to do that, or you can wait uh, at around 1215 my time, which is a, about an hour after the live is done. The uh, project will go live on my blog and there's a link in my video description for that. So you can get lots of close up photos there. You can see the supply list again. You can see all the products and they are linked to my online store. So if you are not a demonstrator yourself or you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you want to purchase any of these products I use, then you can shop on my online store. And here's my website name, by the way, stampyourartout.com. Let us move to the computer. I'm, I'm on the comments right now that you guys are sharing, so I better, I better pull up my supply list here before I switch over to the computer. You guys don't want to see other people's comments, do you? <laughs> Maybe you do. It's fun. It's fun to see like the behind the scenes, the control room, I guess I'm going to call it. So here we are on the um, document that shows the supplies and measurements for my project. You can see we're going to be using some stuff from the August through December mini catalog again. It's so seasonal, right? So we're using the autumn, uh, beautiful autumn stamp set and the punches that go with it. I'll show you those in a second. The plaid tidings designer paper, which is one of my top favorites. I love that paper so much. Um, along with that, we'll be using some coordinating colors. A wink of Stella, I'm bringing that in today. Got to add a little sparkle. Um, and then we have some basic tools. And of course, disposable face masks are at the bottom. You don't have to use disposable, by the way. You could use one that you know, you've know you handmade or something. It just has to be able to lie flat and fold in half and have like elastic bands that would stretch easily around this project. The measurements are simple, except once we get going. <laughs> so you'll wanna pay attention to the video. Um, it's not just an eight and a half by eight and a half piece of glass, uh, basic black cardstock. Um, there's some score lines in there, uh, but I didn't want to write them in because the second set of score lines going in the opposite direction of the first are a little bit more complicated. Um, and then we're of course using Whisper White and Basic Black as our neutrals to add our colored ink to and our beautiful designer paper to. So let's go to the table now and I'm going to show you. This is, um, was that a smooth transition or was that really quick? I'm, <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, never mind. Sorry. I'm seeing if my behind the room, uh, behind the scenes control room um, buttons are pushed correctly because I had to actually stop everything and then restart it because I had that flashy light background thing going on. That happened one other time when I was doing Facebook Lives, and I think it has to do with some kind of glitch that's going on with my with my cameras. So I stopped it and started over and I just want to make sure I look good. But look at this. This is so cool. So here's the here's how it came, like this, right? And then you open it up by just twisting off the little handles for the face mask. And look at this. Is this cool? <laughs> I love it. So of course I've been using this face mask because it was, I think I have like one for every outfit now, but this one's my, you know, matches everything face mask. <laughs> Thank you again, Verla. I'm loving this. So I'm going to show you how to um, make that project. Let me first introduce to you the, the face masks that my husband got for me. He picked them up at the store because he's the only one running errands right now with my broken toe. I'm not entering a vehicle yet as a driver. I'm nervous about like if, you know, we were to have some kind of, I don't know, where I had to stop suddenly that my other foot would tense up. Even though the brake is in my left toe, I just want it to keep healing because it's going well. For those of you that are wondering, I'm, I'm healing well. <laughs> but this is the brand that he picked up and it comes with 10 in a pack. Um, I'm not sure if you can get them everywhere or, or if you could find these on Amazon, but they're pretty basic, um, you know, sanitary type disposable face masks. So 
I'm excited. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna show you the beautiful autumn stamp set and the punches that coordinate with that. If I can find those. Where did I put my punches? Oh shoot, <laughs> they're back here. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> and I didn't want you guys to see the back of my head today because I didn't shower. <laughs> I don't know what the back of my head looks like, but there you go. There, that's me. That's Rachel being real. I, I woke up today and just kind of fluffed the hair. <laughs> Here are the punches that coordinate with that stamp set. Beautiful autumn. And you can see that there are three images on here um, and the inside images that will coordinate. So like this one here, the oak leaf um, works with those two. And then we've got the acorn, we've got the maple leaf, we've got a pine cone. Um, so, I'm sorry, the first three that I mentioned coordinate with the punches. And then we've got the, the pine cone, a leaf, a cluster of leaves, um, and then just a couple extra little images here, along with some great sentiments. And this is the sentiment that, um, that Verla used on hers, so I just, I had to use it because it's just, it's appropriate, right? So, we start out with, um, our trimmer and our trimmer is going to be extended on the arm here because we want to make sure that we can get to the eight and a half inch mark okay we'll grab our base cardstock and you can use any color so if you've got um, you know a different kind of designer paper that you want to use just coordinate it with whatever designer paper you have so this is already an eight and a half by eleven sheet of basic black cardstock we're gonna bring it into our trimmer with the arm extended and we're just gonna do a square piece. So eight and a half by eight and a half. And then we're gonna move it in this direction slightly and score it down the middle. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter inches. So now we'll zoom in a bit, a bit so you can see that here on my trimmer. So here's the four inch mark. Here's the four and a quarter inch mark. So we'll just score it right there with the scoring blade. That's the light gray blade. You just press down and it breaks the fibers on the center of the cardstock so it's easier to fold in half. Now when we rotate and score in the opposite direction, we're gonna rotate. We're not gonna score down the middle because if you look at um, Verla's, you can see that there's a little bit of like a binding there. So we're gonna score twice down this center. So instead of scoring the middle at four and a quarter, we're gonna move in just a bit to four and an eighth. And we're not actually gonna to go to four and an eighth inches because I found that I wanted it a little bit flatter, maybe something that I could put in the mail a little bit easier. So my, uh, and actually, you know, open it up and then mail it if you're gonna mail it because it'll lie flatter. And I think, I'm not sure if it's over two ounces for US. You might have to add extra postage, but if you open it up and put it in a larger envelope, it should work. But anyways, when it's closed, it's a little bit more tight and fitted. If you go to four and an eighth inches, I'm gonna zoom in even more here so you can see better. So I went to four and an eighth, and then I went slightly above that. But I didn't go to the next 16th inch mark. I went between those two. So four and an eighth, and then just between those next two marks, okay? So then you're gonna score, and without moving your paper, you're going to do a little bit of trimming again. So we're just gonna leave it right here and we're gonna trim up to, just move that blade out of the way, that's the scoring one. I'm gonna trim up to that middle score line that's going across here, okay? Now we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna do the same spot, same measurement. So we're gonna flip it around, go to four and an eighth, you can see why I didn't write this on the measurements list. <laughs> and then go just slightly above four and an eighth, okay? So score, and now we wanna trim here. So we have to lift our blade, or our, um, our little piece here, we have to lift that, and then um, we put it down and we slice up and away. And now we've got this little section that we can trim out with our paper snips. Oh, I forgot to mention that you need a paper snips. That should be in the supply list, sorry. You just trim that right there on the score line. And you've got a score mark going across here and two going that way, okay? Hopefully you can see that. Yes, you can, okay, awesome. All right, now, now that we've got that cut, let's go ahead and cut our um, Whisper White 
for the inside. Now our Whisper White, you'll notice had a strange, it had a plus sign after the measurement because of the way that I just scored the base. If you don't wanna bother with all these fractions of a fraction of a fraction, um, <laughs> you can certainly go to the four and an eighth mark and you can make these a little bit more, you know, easier measurements. But I'm gonna go ahead and take my Whisper White cardstock and I'm gonna cut a piece that is four inches by a little over three and seven eighths, okay? So here's my three and seven eighths, and I'm gonna go a little over that. Here, I'll zoom in again one more time. Okay, so here's three and seven eighths. I'm gonna go just above that. <laughs> I love math, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, now this is our skinnier direction, um, you know, from here to here, and this is our wider. So I'm gonna keep it upright like that because I wanna stamp on it so that my words are going this way. So remember that, it's not a perfect square. Then we needed a piece of Whisper White that is one inch by three and a half inches, and we needed some scrap. So I've got some scrap, um, which I can stamp and punch out of, okay? Lots of scrap there. My next cut thing that I wanna cut is my designer paper. And this designer paper, I'll show you, it comes in a variety pack of plaids, they're so pretty. Oops, <laughs> I don't have a full pack here, at least I don't think I do. Maybe it is, I don't know, but I've got, um, oh, look at that, aren't they cool? So there's all of the, I'll show you from the front here first, and then I'll flip it over and show you the other direction. But you can see that there's just a wide variety of colors here. So you're sure to find some ink in your stash that matches. <laughs> and leaves can turn lots of different colors when they're falling from the tree and so you could actually have like you know green blues <laughs> just kidding i'm not sure about blues you could i don't know but and then here's the flip side of those papers lots of fun designs right and here you have these neutrals like the black or you have like this here that's kind of a neutral there's another one in here kind of grayish so you could if you had if you didn't have the color inks that i'm showing you could probably you know, still get this paper and use other inks that you have with those papers, okay? So there's the plaid tidings. Plaid tidings designer paper, it's in six by six. You get 48 sheets and you get four of each double-sided design. Okay, so what do we do with that? You cut it at four inches and then you cut it again, two inches, two inches, and then this last section is also two inches. We're gonna set those aside in order. I'm just gonna put those right up here, okay? So I've got them in, my or in, in the same order that they were. Not that it really matters actually though, because there's a big, big gap between two pieces that you're gonna try to put together. Um, but I just thought with the lines on them, it might flow better, okay? And then this last piece here, we're gonna use all of it. <laughs> so cut it four inches. And now you've got a four inch piece, or four by, sorry, four inch by two inch piece again, and you've got a two by two. So we'll set those up there. We'll move the trimmer out of the way, because I think we're done with that. We're gonna bring in a punch, and this punch is our banner triple punch. Um, what's great about this punch is that it makes three different widths of paper cut into a banner. We're gonna use the smallest width, which is one inches, but it goes from one to one and a half to two. And if you have a paper that's in between those sizes or even beyond a little bit, you can, st well, not beyond. Sorry, I lied on that last comment. But if you have it between those, you know, a two, two inches or under, you can still slip it in there. Look on the back side and you can center it before you punch it, even if it doesn't, ha you know, it doesn't have the sides to hold it still. But because we have a one inch piece, we've got the sides and it holds it real steady in there. So I can just slip it in and punch it in this way. Or if I really you know, wanna see what's going on in the bottom, I can flip it over and give it a punch. And now I've got a piece that's the size I want. And we have a couple other pieces here. Let's grab our scrap. Um, hang on, I have to reach for something. I've got a bunch of little goodies here. That I've already prepared so we don't have to do all the punching and stamping 
but let me show you what I've got here. Way too many maple leaves. I guess I went crazy with the maple leaves. <laughs> and I have some acorns. Okay, so preparing those pieces. Let's zoom in. Um, so what do we do? We're going to stamp. Yay! So my outline of my images are in the Memento Tuxedo Black. Um, it's just my favorite black. That's the only reason why I picked it. Oh, and here are my stamps. Okay, did I show you? I did show you, right? Yes, I did. Okay, so we're gonna be using the outline images right now, and we'll do um, some oak leaves, because that's what we need. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because, um, never mind. It's, it, it's, a, it's something, never mind. I'll shut up. <laughs> I just, I paired up my maple leaves with my acorns and was told not to do that <laughs> well I mean they don't they don't fall from the same tree she didn't really say not to do that but she thought it was funny and I have an oak leaf in my backyard it's dropping acorns left and right so it's I guess I wasn't thinking about what leaves go with acorns but oak leaves are the ones that go with acorns so there there <laughs> but we're gonna throw in some maple leaves anyways because they're just so pretty so I need a few of these um, you know what, I am going to go ahead and just do a couple of all the others too. Um, so we'll stamp our maple leaf a couple times. And I'm leaving plenty of room around them because I want to be able to punch them out without interfering the other images. Um, if you have them too close, you're not going to be able to have that little white outline around them. And that happened on a couple of them because I was just stamping way too fast. So we'll do our acorns and if you stamp on a strip instead of a larger piece like like something like this then if you accidentally stamp upside down you can still punch it out by flipping the strip over okay so stamp these on a little strip of cardstock okay now we need our fillers so our pieces that are gonna um, fill in but you know what since I have my black open let's just quickly stamp our sentiment images so from that stamp set, we obviously need the one that says life is better with you. And we're gonna stamp that on our banner. So we'll just um, put it off to the left a little bit because that's gonna come in from the right-hand side. And then this piece we've kept in the direction I want it to be. So it's, it's tall, it's standing up, okay? Remember, it's not a square piece. So you wanna keep that in mind. And then this will get stamped towards towards the top so that you have room to write a message if you want to. And like Verla, she didn't consider hers a card. She didn't have any sentiment on the inside. It was more of a holder. But if, if you're giving this to somebody, if you're gifting it to somebody, then you may want to have a place to write on the inside. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're going to bring in our colors. And this is our Mango Melody color. Now this is one of my favorite colors. I'll show you. This is what it looks like, okay? So it's an, a real yellowy orange. It's in the Brights collection of colors and it coordinates with the paper, okay? So that's one of the colors that they listed as going with the paper. So, but I wanted to have kind of a really light yellowish look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink up my stamp. I'm gonna stamp it, oh, you know what? I was hoping that would happen. It doesn't look like it has a lot of ink equally on this stamp and it looks like I've been using this ink too much. So we're going to bring in the re-inkers. This is a re-inker and I'm going to show you how to apply the re-inking, uh, the ink to a uh, ink pad. It's, it's really easy. So you, it's like an eye drop bottle only don't put it in your eyes. <laughs> You're going to, you can either like drip little dots on it, but you just kind of, you know, add some ink to the surface. Now if you just let it soak in, like what we used to do with the, um, for, um, the old ink pads because this is the new one this is the cushy one it's called firm foam but if you just let it sink in it's gonna be uneven so when you ink up your stamp let's see if I can show through a little bit here you can see oh maybe you can see one area is maybe slightly darker than the other area of the stamp and we don't want that so then you'd grab like the a piece of plastic or the uh, back of a a spoon or something like that. I keep plastic spoons in my stash, but I also have this thing and I don't know where it came from. <laughs> so you could use like a credit card or a gift card 
or something, um, you know, anything that's kind of got a plastic or metal, um, you just, just so that you can smoosh it along, right? You don't want anything that's absorbable. Is that a word? <laughs> so you're going to just kind of move that ink around and you press so that you kind of, you know, work it through and it helps to even out the ink a little bit better. Okay. Um, cause this ink, it just soaks it right in. And you also don't want to over ink these ink pads. Now from the camera, you can see it doesn't look like it's perfectly even, but over time, um, it starts to, um, uh, look more even. And even when I ink it up, it'll, it'll have a very even look to it. Then you just wash this off. You just wash it off. I'm going to set it, I think right here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to ink this again and I'm just going to show you, see, it kind of has an uneven look there. So we're going to ink that up and we're going to stamp it down because I don't want full color. So we're going to do what we just did. See, that's way more even looking. And now when we stamp it into the center of our image, we have a light yellow look as opposed to, let me show you this. This is full on color. Now I have to stamp another one because I didn't want that, but there's full on color. And I didn't want an orangey look. I wanted a yellow look because I know that my um, oak leaves, they, um, oh, here's the black, that they yellow when they start to die. So we need another one in here somewhere. Hang on, here's another scrap I have. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we need to for sure do all of our oak leaves. So we'll stamp off, stamp on. I love photopolymer for these um, two-step stamps. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, okay, good. Because you can see directly through them. I love the clear stamps. Okay, next, so let's close this up and open up our soft suede. So our soft suede, oh, I've, I've opened this one up plenty of times. It is loosey-goosey. That's another thing. With your stamp pads, when you first get them, they are gonna feel really stiff and it, almost like they're super hard to open, but just keep working with them. You can even put like chapstick. Um, I know my friends, Nancy and Kayla, do that. They put a little chapstick on the sides here and it helps to kind of move them easier. Anyways, mine's set. This one's all set. <laughs> so we're going to stamp off again for the lower portion of our acorn. And then we're going to use full ink for the top portion of our acorn. And our acorn top portion, to me, that looks like um, a hot dog. <laughs> so you could totally go outside the box and make a hot dog card with this stamp set. All right, the next one. And I won't... I don't need to do both acorns, but um, so that's why I'm not stamping the next one. But pumpkin pie is another color. Now the soft suede was not a color that was in the plaid paper, but I tried doing something that was in, you know, the color scheme of that paper. It just didn't look right with the acorns. So we went with brown and I, st I think it looks good. So we're gonna use full color with the maple leaf. Now maple leaves go, they do the whole gamut of colors. They have yellows and reds and oranges and they're just gorgeous. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do an orange maple leaf that looks like it's on the verge of turning red. And I just got ink on my fingers. So we'll just eat it cause it's non-toxic. There, it's done. Okay, let's close up the ink pads. <laughs> Gross, right? All right. We are set except for punching these pieces and then we can put it together. So you use your punch upside down. For those of you that are beginning or new to stamping, you just use your punch upside down so you can line everything up. And we're gonna punch out our three oak leaves, our, the ones that we need for sure. The rest of these pieces we've got ready to go, so I won't punch them all out. Okay, we can set those aside and we're ready to assemble. So you're gonna grab your bone folder at this point, and we're gonna first crease in this direction. So you just wanna make sure your corners go corner to corner, and you're gonna use your bone folder to make those folds nice and crisp, okay? Then you can see where it's gonna fold in the middle here. So we wanna have a fold along this edge, 
and we want to have a fold along this edge and I find that it's easiest to fold them both because they're so close together fold them both if you can keep this folded up like this and use the bone folder as kind of a guide to help so that you're getting that crease emphasized and this crease emphasized now we can open it up okay and we're gonna fold again and we're gonna reinforce those creases. So we wanna fold it flat down, make sure everything's lined up edge to edge, and we're just gonna use that bone folder again. And now we're gonna turn this way and fold. You can see it, it's, we started it, but we seriously have to like do that bone folder thing to make sure that those folds are right, right where we want them, okay? So we've got the inside binding seam score line thingy. <laughs> okay, so that's ready to decorate. Um, the outside, and I'm just gonna open one up so I can just do it along with us here. Hang on, you're not gonna see it yet. Shh, don't look. <laughs> okay, this is the outside. So for the outside, we want to have these two panels pair up um, for sure because they're gonna be seen when you open up the whole thing, you're gonna see a panel here and a panel here. So when we put those on, I am choosing from the three that were cut out at the same time from that one section, right? Because the lines all go in the same direction. So I don't know, it really doesn't matter. I think I'll choose these two. And then from that point on, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? But these two, I wanna make sure that they, they flow into each other. So we're using our seal adhesive Sometimes you have to get it going. There we go. And we're just gonna put two pieces of um, seal along the, the sides there. And we'll line them up so they're about an eighth of an inch away from the cuts and the score lines. Okay, so here's, that's that one. See how it's an eighth of an inch all the way around? And then the same thing here. And again, don't flip it because it looks funny. <laughs> so keep it going in the same direction. All right, so those will go here. And then these other two that you have that you cut that are also the same size, the four by two inch pieces, are gonna go opposite on top. And those won't really matter if they're lined up or not. Like I'm gonna do this on purpose. I'm gonna put them down so that they're not lined up and you'll see why, why it doesn't matter when we close it. So those will go here and here. And I'm not putting the tape, the adhesive, right up to the edges because we're gonna be tucking some leaves. So you can see that there's you know, a little bit of space on the edges of both, of all four of these pieces, just so that we can tuck some leaves. We're gonna be tucking. And this is what I mean by tucking, okay? So now I'm gonna close this up so you can see why it doesn't matter. This is the front one. It's not opposite of another one. These are the two that match up, and then this is the back. Okay, on the inside, or the flip side of this, this is where your square piece is gonna go. So you're gonna use up all six by six inches of that plaid paper. If you're using 12 by 12 designer paper, you could get four of these from one sheet. I know, right? <laughs> all right, and then our last piece, is gonna go here and you can see why we needed to stamp it I mean you could still fit it but it doesn't fit the same it's it's 3 30 seconds of an inch difference <laughs> so if you're paying attention to the math I'm gonna put adhesive on all four sides for this one I'm loving this adhesive now you guys I don't know if you know that but it, it you just have to like use it for those of you that have been struggling with it, just keep using it. And that those tips that I've been sharing in the past few videos about, you know, just roll it to get it going again or catch it where it's already done, um, had some tape so it can get going again. Or you can even use the silicone mats. Um, it kind of just grips it and helps it roll again. Those are the issues that I have with it is just getting it going again. So if you have those three things in mind, it's, it's lovely tape and you don't have to press hard. When you press hard, that's where I was having issues. Just stick it down and pull. It's real, it's, it'll be good to you if you're good to it. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Okay, on the inside of this, we're gonna 
add a few leaves. So let's go ahead and start sticking these onto a glue dot strip. So these, uh, here it is. So what I do is I just take my roll of glue dots and I unwind until I see one that's ready to go. So I only expose one at a time. So for the acorns, I actually grab two glue dots. So I'm gonna set it down on there. Now that I've grabbed one and I've lifted it up and I've stuck it down on the next one. So there's two on the back of the acorns because the acorns stick up on top of everything. Um, and I just feel like they needed a little bit more support. My maple leaves, I just stick down, you know, one of those. And I think I, I need four, uh, three maple leaves. Three, one, two, three, hang on, four. I need four maple leaves. So there's our maple leaves. And I need, and I have already one oak leaf over here, so I need four more of those. Two, see how I'm just unwinding as I go? Three, and I need another one. Four, and then for the acorns I need one, two, three. And I've already got one, two, so let's do one more. Okay, and again with the acorns, I'm using two glue dots. So I lift up and I stick it down onto another one. Now at this point, I do not recommend pulling this whole thing off because now what you've got here is all these exposed glue dots. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> it's gonna mess up your, your glue dots. So just again, um, start peeling them off like this. And as you come around, to where your glue dots underneath begin. So here, I'm gonna show you. Oh, see, we still have a few that need to be, that still need a little protection over them. So we're gonna keep on pulling. So if you're making mass loads of these, and I did, um, see now at this point, now that I don't have any more glue dots exposed, I can just take and tear off any more that I've prepared, oops, that I've prepared on my strip. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn these all over so that we can just add them quickly. This project is so fun, you guys. I had a blast making these. I made 10 plus the three samples. So, oh, lots of little paper specks on there. Um, so plus the three samples, so I made 13 all together in like, I don't know, just a few hours because I was obsessed for one thing, <laughs> but it's easy. It's so easy once you get going. So we've got that, but let's decorate the inside with a couple oak leaves going like that, and a maple leaf sticking out there, and then an acorn right on top. So there's the inside. We're gonna fold it. We're gonna stick, um, I think, uh, hang on. I wanna make sure I do it the same way as my other ones. Okay, yep, so I'm gonna have my maple leaf tucked in there. I'm going to have my oak leaf tucked in here like that. And then this next one's going to go on top of the leaf I just did. And this one's going to go on top of the leaf I just did. And they're kind of angled in there. So they're not, they're not coming out straight. They're coming out as angles. Okay. And then on the front, because we don't need to decorate the back. I mean, if you want to, you can. Oh, I forgot to do the little punches. Let's do those now, because the, the front, you need to have the punched um, edges in order to know where to place that. So now we bring in the one and a half inch circle punch. And if you don't have this size, any size around there will work. You could even trace like um, something small and circular and then hand cut. So we're gonna open it up at the bottom here. We're gonna grab the two front layers, okay? So this one is made out of three layers. You can see that there. We're just gonna grab the two front layers because there's only two and we're gonna line it up. Now, if you feel like you can just do one, you can do that also, just do one layer of cardstock. But I can punch through two pretty easily with my strength. So we're gonna punch, oops, line it up and punch. And they're gonna fly at you, it's gonna be fun. It's like a party. And then we're gonna close it down and make sure these edges line up. You're gonna grab a pencil and you're gonna come in and just trace. And now for this one, I opened it up. I found it easier to do my punching through two layers only, not three. So then I lay it down again and I trace. 
and I line it up and I punch. Oops, it's hard to see with the lighting. You know, I don't like days that are super cloudy, but when I'm doing video days, I love it because you know what? I can have my window open and there's no glare so I can see outside my window. It's raining out here in Andover, but you know, that's fall. <laughs> okay. So we've got our punched pieces and they line up all together. Now this here, we're just gonna add a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit of lift on the ends of the banner. So you can see if I tilt it to the side, it's hardly any lift at all, okay? And we'll add that down with a couple strips of seal. And that's going to connect an eighth of an inch away from my right edge here and it's gonna be parallel to the top edge of the card. The plaid paper makes it super easy to make sure that this is straight because you can even use the lines of your plaid. And then on the front here, we have, make sure I'm doing it the way I've done the other ones. <laughs> um, so we have one that's just set right here. We have one that is set right here. I didn't tuck or anything. Then we have, of our two remaining, I'd like to pick out the one that I like the most, and these two are pretty much the same. But we'll um, stick one down, so it's going straight up and down here, and then this one's just gonna be kind of tilted on top of it, like that. Now the last part is, of course, the band. So we're gonna grab, actually, we'll grab a new one here. So we're gonna grab from our bag one of our face masks, and we open it up. Isn't this cool, you guys? So we open it up like that, center it, fold these over. Well, of course you'll write on the inside first, right? Fold them over, fold them again, take these two ends, twist them, and then just go like that over the top. And then if you want to, you can make these look like they're, you know, Kind of lined up with each other although on the back side you will have twists just so you know so there's a little bit of bulk with this but again if you take and you mail it like this in a larger envelope it's not, it can go through in an envelope a regular envelope um, but again I think weight wise you might need two stamps at least in the US so fun 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 so the people, um, there's some teammates that I have, some people in my group, my Stampers with Art Stars group, that are receiving these shortly. It takes me a while to get my cards done because I like to put a lot of work in them. Okay, so let me show you the difference. Um, the other two, let's bring this in again. Um, set that back there. So here's the first one that I just did. Then I have two other versions, and the third version is where the Wink of Stella came in. I didn't do it on this last one, but here's Wink of Stella. It's like a little paintbrush, um, so you pull the cap off, and you squeeze it to get it going. There's like little push areas where you push onto it, and you squeeze to get this metallic-y sheer ink to come out, and it's it's got like a shimmer to it, okay? And then you take, and let's see if I can get the angle right here so you can see the shimmer. Oh good, there you can see it. So you take and you start painting and it just adds the sparkle to it that is just, is that, can you see it pretty well? It's just stunning, stunning sparkle. It's so pretty. Um, yeah, so there we go. Those are the three that I created, three, three different versions. But again, that plaid paper gives you leeway for all kinds of fun color combinations and stuff. I use the same color combinations on all three of these. Um, the insides of these look like that and like that. So you can see it's the same design, just different plaid paper. And then on the other one, I've got, oops, on the other one, I've got those. Again, sparkly leaves. I added the shimmer, um, the Wink of Stella shimmery paint stuff on there and on the inside. I just love these. I'm so excited. Um, it makes sense why you'd want to laminate them if you're going to keep them to, you know, hold your face masks in. Um, but yeah, fun, 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 fun. Okay, we need to um, focus somewhere else now, Rachel. <laughs> let's go to, um, let's see here, hang on. 
Um, we are going to go to our computer and we're going to set up. I forgot to share comments from last week. Can we do that really quickly? I love sharing these comments and then we'll, then we'll go back to the desktop. I'll get the prizes set out so you can see those soon. And then, um, we will hang on. Okay. So we're going to go to <laughs> my computer again. And I just want to share with you, um, some comments that have rolled in from last week. Um, during the live that I wanted to acknowledge. Look at all the places everybody is sharing where they are from and I love this because we not only say you know Texas, England and you're saying your cities. Look at this fun city to pronounce. Is that Flu Pflugerville? Um, but cool. I love this and then Swedish Forest. Jenny was in the Swedish Forest and Chris was camping in Colorado. <laughs> It's so cool. So thank you for saying where you're from. It's always fun to read those. Um, and thank you for your sweet words too. Let's see here. We had some first timers last last week. I, I caught a couple of those comments coming through and I just wanted to say hello to our first timers. Love it. Um, Rose made a funny joke about spiders disappearing. I did find my spider from last week. It was still on the table. It wasn't underneath my um, stamp and cut and emboss machine or anything. It was just there. I just didn't see it. So, yes, but they do. The real ones do get away easily. Uh, Zentangle was definitely the um, name given to the artist, artistic design of those bats that we had in that stamp set last week. So thank you. There were a ton of you that mentioned that, so I appreciate it. And then Kayla was chiming in because I think she looked up what eight pounds equals in kilograms. That is the weight of the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So thank you, Kayla. Um, and then we had some people who are asking questions in both directions um, about the plates and the platforms and all of that being interchangeable with the previous machine that Stampin' Up! used to carry, which was the Sizzix Big Shot, and the one that we now carry, which is the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And I have found that all of them are interchanging pretty well. But I do want to make a note of this because someone brought this up in a comment that it could void your warranty if you have some kind of issue. So just keep that in mind. But I have had, I've had no issues with interchanging them. And I have both machines here and I've been p playing with that. So um, I wanna say it's good to go, but I'm not gonna guarantee that you're not gonna have any issues because I don't wanna you know, be the one responsible if something happens. I'm just saying that I've been able to use them interchangeably, if that helps. And I don't know what the Vagabond is. It must be another die cutting machine. So I can't answer you, Claudette, on that question. Linda, wow. Five kilos of butter she was making. <laughs> so I was impressed with that. It's always fun to read what you're doing while you're watching. Um, some of you just drink coffee and enjoy, but some of you are actually making five pound or five kilos of butter. And Deborah, great tip. We had a stamp where we'd ink it up and it would the ink would get into the little crevice area, that, but you needed to keep that little area there because otherwise the stamp would get distorted and wouldn't fit with the die. She recommended putting some tape over it, inking it up, and then peeling the tape away. Brilliant. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our desktop here. And um, this is the prizes that we had from last week. So I forgot to mention that I was going to throw in a card that I have previously shown in uh, um, in one of my past lives. So the iridescent pearls and a card from my past lives. This, this one even comes with the matching envelope. Those are for the prize winners that I have pre-drawn um, from our last week's video. So let me pull that up so we can see the names. Congratulations to Randy and Joy. You two are the winners for those iridescent pearls and the fun cards from a past live. And then I'm gonna pull out on my table. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna show these because we still have, we still have Miss Robin and Rose. I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna call out your name here too. Um, Robin Livingston and Rose Bud, you have not claimed your prizes yet. And pretty soon Rose, yours is gonna go back in the bin. <laughs> It can't really go back in a bin because it's a tutorial, but you need to contact me. So reach out to me. Um, Robin, reach out to me. You get to pick a stamp set of your choice. I'll show those to you on the table. These are your choices that you have left, dear. 
<laughs> so please get back to me. Let me know which one you want. And now for this week's prize, we have the fabulous Wink of Stella. And we have something that I thought should not just be let go on the clearance rack. These were on the clearance rack. I don't know if they're still there. But I was like, oh my gosh, these are the best journaling pens. So a set of journaling pens and a Wink of Stella, fresh and new, for our winners. Two will be drawn next week, um, which is why I have three prizes out. And then the other winner was probably just drawn now. So let me pull up my computer screen so I can see. I want to see if Kayla has drawn a winner. She probably has. Um, just scrolling through these past comments here. She probably picked it a long time ago because I am chatty. Oh, she has not yet. I don't see. You know what, Kayla? If you haven't chosen the winner yet, or you have, either way, could you announce that winner one more time? And I'm going to pull up on my screen. I should get a little overlay that says my phone number. But I'm going to... Oh, there we go. Oh, Trisha. Trisha! <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know what? I'm just going to give you guys the name of moderator. Trisha's here with me today. <laughs> Hi, Trisha. <laughs> Amy, Amy Rudd, you won. Congratulations to you, my dear. You won that. Oh, Trisha. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Last week, Trisha, I called, um, <laughs> I called Kayla. Corey. Yes, I did. Okay, let me, um, let me grab something on my screen here. Okay, gosh, we're running out of time. Let me show you how you can reach me. On my, on my website at stampyourartout.com, you can reach out to me by clicking, you know, you go to stampyourartout.com and then you scroll down and you can find me by contacting me via phone number, you can email me, um, or you can reach out to me on Facebook if we're friends, but please try to reach me by one of those ways because I, would, I really wanna make sure that these prizes go out to all of you. So on that note, we have taken up 50 minutes of time. I'm so sorry. Again, I try to hurry. September 16th is next week. I will be live with you on YouTube again at 11 a.m. I hope that you had fun. Again, if you need any of these products, if you need, see, I mean, seriously, it's, a, it's, it's an addiction for me, so I need them. But if you want to purchase any of these products and you are not a demonstrator yourself or you do not have a demonstrator of your own, you can purchase them through me. And I appreciate all of you who are watching me on YouTube. Make sure that you click that like button for the video um, and click subscribe. Um, I think I have a little button in my lower, let's see if I'm pointing the right way, lower corner. <laughs> my, my picture is opposite of yours. So when I'm looking at myself in this, I'm, it's not a mirror. So there, I think I'm pointing the right way. Anyways, subscribe and then make sure your notifications are on so that you get um, notifications of when I'm gonna go live the next time. But usually it's every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time, and I hope that you can come back next week. I do have a project in mind. I haven't made it yet, but I'm excited. I can't wait to share it with you. So we'll see you, hopefully, all next week. Congratulations to the prize winners. Thank you all for joining me. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.